The great Redeemer, worthy is your name in all the earth. There's no one like you all over the world. Thy will be done, great Lord. Mighty Redeemer, worthy is your name in all the earth. There's no one like you. Worthy, holy, worthy is your name. 
Africa, Asia, North and South America, Europe and Australia, thy will be done.
strong tower, the righteous running to it and are saved. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Yes, to be praised. Yes, to Lord, the giver of life, Lord, the day, the day of joy, the day of blessing, glory and honor be unto your name. And Lord, our God, we are committing everything we are going to do today into your hands. Lord, let Praise the Lord. Brethren, you are welcome into the presence of God. This platform is being operated by Liberty Christian Connection, part of the body of a, a redeemed Christian Church of God. And we bless the name of the Lord that you are part of this uh, fellowship. And uh, this is where expectation becomes manifestation. Today, your expectation will become manifestation in Jesus' name. No one coming to the presence of God will go the same. And we will see the touch of God in your life through his word in Jesus' name. Um, please continue to join us. We pray for nations. We pray for the world. And we pray for ourselves as well. And as we do this, the Lord will pray for us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Um, we have the um, introduction of uh, Africa. Praise God. That's the continent we are praying for. The second largest continent by geographic area after Asia. It's the most tropical and covers about one fifth of the total land surface of Earth. With a population of 1.2 billion people, Africa has 54 countries fully recognized by the United Nations, two independent states with limited or no recognition, and several territories, mostly islands, controlled by non-African countries. For example, the Canary Islands are ruled by Spain. Nigeria is by far the largest country in terms of population, with more than 211 million people as of 2021. Seychelles, an Indian Ocean archipelago made up of 115 islands is Africa's smallest country with a total population of about 98,000. Africa's population is the youngest of all the continents with a median age of 19.7 in comparison to the global median age of 30.4. Africa is also the poorest continent, excluding Antarctica, by a wide margin. The region contains an enormous wealth of mineral resources, including some of the world's largest reserves of fossil fuels, metallic ores and gems, and precious metals. There is also a great diversity of biological resources, such as equatorial rainforests and populations of wildlife. 
Subsistence agriculture still dominates the economies of many African countries, and the exploitation of its mineral resources became the most significant economic activity in Africa in the 20th century. Religion in Africa has been a major source of influence on art, culture, and philosophy. Today, the continent's populations are mostly adherents of Christianity, Islam, and to a lesser extent, several traditional African religions. Religious beliefs are also sometimes characterized with syncretism that is mixed with the beliefs and practices of traditional religions. There are several thousand different societies or ethnic groups in Africa, and between 900 and 1,500 different languages are spoken. Ethnic or cultural differences in modern times have often been heightened, exacerbated, or muted for political reasons. Christianity came to Egypt in 1500 and by the 2nd century had spread to Ethiopia and Eritrea. Arabs brought Islam to North Africa in the 7th century and the Europeans brought Christianity and the transatlantic slave trade from the 16th to the 19th centuries. An estimated 10 million Africans were shipped to the New World as slaves. The European colonization on the 19th century scramble for Africa came to an abrupt end in the 1960s. Africa faces several challenges made worse by the recent poly crisis, that is, climate related issues, the COVID 19 pandemic, and mounting conflicts. This has dampened economic activity and increased the burden of debt on countries. Economic growth remains uneven across the continent. The continent of Africa has the opportunity to harness the potential of its resources and people for its future development. God bless you, beloved. Good morning once again. Welcome to the prophetic voice to the nations. We thank God for his grace. We thank God for all the, the wonderful gadgets that we have. We're connecting with you live from Liberty Christian Connections, Liberty House in Ilford in Essex. You've heard us speak a little bit about the continent of Africa and all the different facets, all the different issues that have been prevalent within this continent. But we're here to pray and we're here to ask God for his mercy over the nations. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, the nation that we're going to pray about this morning is Liberia. But before we do that, let's take a a, a psalm before the Lord. We're going to take a psalm so we can pray and uh, and have a time of fellowship with the Lord. Praise God. The Bible tells us that we can come and speak to each other in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And so we're going to do that. We're going to speak a psalm unto the Lord. And uh, the Lord is, is indeed one of us. He's in the midst of us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's just take Psalm one zero one psalm one zero one i'm going to read from my paper bible and the lord be glorified in the name of jesus praise god psalm one zero one hallelujah hallelujah it's the psalmist's profession of uprightness verse one i will sing of steadfast loving kindness and justice to you O lord i will sing praises i will behave wisely and follow the way of integrity when will you come to me O god i will walk in my house in integrity and with a blameless heart i will set no worthless or wicked thing before my eyes i hate the practice of those who fall away from the right path it will not grasp hold of me a perverse heart shall depart from me. I will not tolerate evil. Verse 5, whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him I will silence. 
the one who has a haughty look and a proud, arrogant heart, I will not tolerate. My eyes will be on the faithful, honorable of the land, that they may dwell with me. This is verse six. He who walks blamelessly is the one who will minister to and serve me. Verse seven, he who practices deceit will not dwell in my house. He who tells lies and half truths will not continue to remain in my presence. Verse eight, morning after morning, which is where we are, praise God. Morning after morning, I will destroy all the wicked in the land that I may cut off from the city of the Lord, all who do evil, all those who do evil. We will not be um, part of the ones who do evil in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We all should be upright before the Lord. As we take these particular prayers to the Lord, we shall be upright before the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. We're going to pray for the nation of Liberia. We want to thank God for all he's doing in this nation. And uh, I believe that we're here to pray and we're here to pray until we see something happen. Praise God. The first sphere of influence we'll pray for is the church, is the church. It's a sphere of religion. We're going to pray that the Lord himself will build churches within the nation of Liberia. We need to see a spirit of unity. We want to see it break out with revival fire, break out amongst the churches in every community in Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to ask that the Lord would allow churches to come together, to band together as a unified army so as to effectively win lost souls for Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. We're also going to pray that anyone who's in any particular town, that they themselves, they themselves, they themselves will receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're also going to pray that the church will allow the Holy Spirit to move freely in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to use Psalm 133 verses 1 to 3, how good and how pleasant it is. We're praying for the spirit of unity, how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that runs down Aaron's bed. What is this oil? This oil is the oil of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Isaiah 32 verse 15. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 15. The Bible is telling us, but we have to wait for the spirit until the spirit, which is poured out from on high. Praise God. There's a spirit that must be poured out from on high and God will do something mighty. Once the Holy Spirit is poured out from on high, you will start to see transformation within the within the nations, including the nation of Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. We'll start to see a massive transformation in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's speak forth the word of God in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 32 verse 15. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 15. Praise God. Until the spirit is poured out upon us, upon Liberia from on high. Hallelujah. And the wilderness in Liberia becomes a fertile field. And the fertile field, this process, is valued as a forest. Praise God. Verse 16. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness and righteousness will live in the fertile field. And the effect of righteousness will be peace. And the result of righteousness will be quietness and confident trust forever. Hallelujah. Verse 18 says, then my people in Liberia will live in a peaceful surrounding and in secure dwellings and in undisturbed resting places. Praise God. I want to submit to you that there is a process of righteousness according to Isaiah chapter 32 verse 15. It says, says the justice will dwell in the wilderness and righteousness will live. So righteousness will live. It will dwell in, in Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. And there will be an effect of righteousness in verse 17. The effect of righteousness, the evidence of righteousness will be peace. And the result of righteousness, so we now see living, we, we now see effectiveness, we now see results. The uh, result of righteousness will be quietness and confident trust forever. Liberia has experienced so many wars, so many troubles, so many coups, so many disturbances. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we're using your word, oh God, as a sword. We're using your word, oh God, Father, as a hammer. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let Liberia experience peace and righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. That your word tells us, oh God, Father, that the kingdom of God, Father, your kingdom of God is righteousness. It is peace. It is joy in the Holy Spirit. 
Father, until the spirit which is poured out from on high, poured out upon Liberia, they will not experience of the peace, the joy, the righteousness that you've promised in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, let Liberia experience your kingdom. Let your kingdom come, oh God. Let your will be done, oh God, in Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your kingdom come, oh God, upon Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. No more civil war. No more injustice in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, no more, um, no, no more quandary in the name of Jesus Christ. No more chaos in the name of Jesus Christ. You are the God of order. Father, set Liberia in order in the name of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40 says, Let everything be done decently and be done in order in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, set Liberia in order in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you, we praise you. Father, we thank you, oh God, that the spiritual realm of God precedes the physical realm in the name of Jesus Christ. As we pray, oh God, for the mountain of religion, as we pray, oh God, for the sphere of influence, oh God, of the spiritual realm. Father, we know, oh God, that everything else in Liberia is sorted in the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, oh God, we thank you, we praise you. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, beloved, and thank you so much for praying. Hallelujah. So even though we've prayed for the spiritual realm, we still need to pray for the remaining realms, and the Lord will help us much more in the name of Jesus Christ. There are seven spheres of influence or seven mountains of influence, and the next one we'll pray for is family. Hallelujah. God is the God of family. The Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the first family, and God wants to replicate that same unity, that same togetherness. Ah, God is faithful. God wants to do the same thing in Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, because of all the troubles and issues in Liberia, we know that there must be some form of healing and restoration that's required. God is the God of restoration. We're going to ask the Lord to restore family in the name of Jesus Christ. Restore the concept of family in the name of Jesus Christ. There are many widows, there are many orphans. Uh, there's, there's many different types, different types of family within Liberia. We're going to pray for unity within the family in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to ask God to break the back and of the spirit of rebellion in the name of Jesus Christ and to restore family altars, even before we restore family altars. Hallelujah. That the whole nation of Liberia must be turned to Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are, we're going to ask God to bring revival into families and into private homes in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're going to take a particular scripture. Let's take the book of Jeremiah 31 verse 1. Jeremiah 31 verse 1. I'm just going to look it up and then we'll pray it with understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Jeremiah 31 verse 1. Hallelujah. This is God speaking. He says, at that time, and this is the time, at that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel and they will be my people. We can, we can in a way, transpose the, the nation of Israel with the nation of, of Liberia. It could be any nation. And, and we're implored to just do that. We're going to pray for Liberia. We're going to pray for the families in Liberia. At that time, at this time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the families in Liberia and they will be my people in the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, you honor your word above your name. Father, we pray, oh God, Father, Yahweh, Sabaoth, oh God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord of heaven. You are the angel, oh God. You are the, you are the one who has all the angels, of oh God, Father, in heaven. Father, we pray, oh God, you will send your angels, oh God, Father, to Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Father, so that many hearts, oh God, Father, will be turned, oh God, towards you in the name of Jesus Christ. Be the God of Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. Be the God of the families in Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. Be, oh God, their God, and they will be your people in the name of Jesus Christ. Let them be the sheep of your pasture in the name of Jesus Christ, for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, we thank you, we praise you. Let your name be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. We pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. God bless you, beloved. Thank you so much for praying. We're going to pray for the sphere of education next of all. We're going to pray for the sphere of education. And we know even for those of us who've been schooled, we know that education is very important. Education is, is even the foundation for careers. It's the foundation even for prosperity in some, some different um, nations. But definitely for us, we need to be educated. Our minds need to be educated. We're going to pray that every single teacher in Liberia, that they will be lovers of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. They cannot give what it is they don't have. 
And if they don't have Jesus, they can't give Jesus, praise God. We're going to pray for a radical spirit that would dare to challenge ungodly rules in the educational system. In fact, we're going to pray for a building up of the Liberian educational system in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray, oh God, Daddy, that you will use teachers to bring about a massive revolution, oh God. Father, an increase, innovation, oh God, within education in the name of Jesus Christ for the sake of the Liberian children in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, oh God, your word says in Psalm 25, verses 4 to 5, oh God, Father, that, that, that we should be taught of you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Even in the book of Isaiah, Father, we thank you, oh God. Even in the book of Isaiah, oh God, Father, we thank you, oh God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, oh God, that you, oh God, you said in, in, in Isaiah 54, oh God, that all of my children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of my children. Father, we thank you, oh God, Daddy, that the peace of the children shall be great as they're taught of you, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray, oh God, an end, oh God, to every form of rebellion in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray, oh God, Father, for the infusion, oh God, of your radical spirit, Father, within the teachers in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, oh God, for head teachers, especially, oh God. Father, let the head teachers, oh God, rule with righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. Give them, oh God, Father, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Give it, oh God, Father, to the teachers, um, to the head teachers, to the teachers and to the children, oh God, in every single form of support staff in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, we thank you, we praise you. Your name shall be glorified forever, O oh God, in Liberia. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen. God bless you, beloved, and thank you so much for praying. Next of all, we shall pray for the government. Hallelujah. We're going to pray that the Lord will raise up godly leaders within the government of Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord wants to do something mighty within Liberia, praise God. We're going to ask the Lord, to infuse the Liberian government and use the leaders as well to do mighty things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray for the different facets of the government system. We will pray for the judiciary. We'll pray for the administrative um, arm. We're also going to pray for um, the legislative arm as well in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're going to ask God. Yes, thank you, Jesus. We're going to ask God to, um, to pour out his spirit of wisdom on the behalf of every single leader, anyone who's in authority in the name of Jesus Christ, we're going to ask God to do something mighty in the name of Jesus Christ within the government. The government is a presidential um, republic and the president is Joseph Bokai, Bokai, B-O-A-K-A-I, B-O-A-K-A-I, Joseph, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there's also Vice President Jeremiah and Jonathan. We just want to thank God for all of these individuals in the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, pour out your spirit of wisdom, oh God. Father, we just use, oh God, Father, Brother Joseph as a point of contact in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, even as Joseph of old was in, in, in the Bible, that he, you used Joseph, oh God, to bring liberty, to bring freedom. Father, we thank you, oh God, Father, for Brother Joseph in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you, oh God, even for the motto of Liberia. Ah, Father, we thank you, oh God. The motto says, the love of liberty brought us here. Father, let the love of liberty, the true liberty that can only be found in Jesus Christ, let it bring Liberia, oh God, into a new realm, into a new phase in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you that you're going to do a mighty new thing, oh God. Bring revival, oh God, Father, to Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, bring revival, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Bring it, oh God, uncanny revival. Let revival start, oh God, Father, in Liberia, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, oh God, you're raising up, oh God, your Daniels, your Josephs, as you have already done, oh God. Father, give them godly counsel in the name of Jesus Christ for the glory of your name, oh God. Father God, we thank you, we praise you. Let your name and your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen. God bless you, beloved. Thank you for praying. God is telling me to pray very quickly for... This scripture, Isaiah 9, verse 6 to 7, yes. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. Uh, the Bible says that the government shall be upon his shoulders, that his is Jesus Christ. The government shall be upon his shoulders. I'll just turn to it very quickly. Verse 6 to 7. Hallelujah. I think it's verse 7 the Lord wants me to read. Praise God. There shall be no end to the increase of his government and of peace. He shall rule on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it, to uphold it with justice and righteousness 
from that time forward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this, will accomplish this. Father, we pray, oh God, over Liberia, oh God, there shall be no end of peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray, oh God, that as Jesus takes takes seat, oh God, in this government, as he infuses himself, oh God, into the minds, oh God, of all the governmental leaders, oh God, let there be peace in Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, we thank you, we praise you, that the zeal of the Lord shall perform it in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we thank you, we praise you, let your name be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. We pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, beloved. Thank you so much for praying. We're going to next of all pray for the media sphere. The media sphere, uh, the Lord has said to me, the media sphere is like the lifeblood that runs throughout a particular nation because people tap into the media in order for them to understand things that are happening around their nation. Praise God. So we're going to pray for a desire of, for purity and righteousness to infiltrate the media in Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. Every form of gossiping spirit, any form of negative spirit that wants to permeate, wants to dwell within, within Liberia, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will bring the spirit of integrity and righteousness and truth into everyone who works within the media in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray against every spirit of manipulation and lies and deceit within Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for the media sphere, oh God. Father, let righteousness and truth, oh God. Father, meet together, kiss together in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray, oh God, that your will shall be done, oh God. Let your righteousness, oh God, Father, be established in, in Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your righteousness, oh God, Father, be revealed, oh God, Father, through the media sphere in the name of Jesus. Let people, oh God, Father, know the truth, oh God, and let the truth set them free in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for gospel radio stations, oh God. We pray for gospel TV stations in the name of Jesus Christ. Let them rise up, oh God, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let people tap into them in the name of Jesus Christ. Let their minds be renewed, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As they tap into the gospel, let the gospel, oh God, Father, take over the airwaves in the name of Jesus Christ. Daniel, your word says in Psalm 19, verse 14, let the words of my mouth, let the words of the media, oh God, and the meditation, oh God, of my heart and the hearts of the people, Father, who are working in the media, oh God, be acceptable and pleasing in your sight in the name of Jesus Christ, because you, O oh Lord, you are our firm, immovable rock and redeemer in the name of Jesus Christ. Be the rock, oh God, Father, in Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, we thank you, we praise you. Let your name be glorified in Jesus mighty name we pray with thanksgiving amen amen thank you beloved thank you so much for praying two more spheres of influence we will pray for before we have a short interlude praise god we're going to pray for arts and entertainment hallelujah and i want to use a stadium as a point of contact one particular stadium i'll use as a point of contact in liberia samuel canyon doe sports complex praise god uh, also known as skd stadium it's a multi-purpose stadium Praise God, which is part of a particular complex in Liberia, in Painesville, Liberia. We're going to pray that every single stadium within Liberia, it shall be used for, 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 for evangelism, it be used for revival in the name of Jesus. There shall be crusades in the name of Jesus Christ in every single stadium in Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. That people should be crying out for Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the glory, your glory, your glory, oh God, Father, fill these stadiums in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, let there be a revelation, oh God, of your purity and righteousness, oh God, to infiltrate, oh God, Father, the arts and entertainment sphere in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, raise up, oh God, Father, Christian sports people, oh God, raise up, oh God, Father, Christian artists, oh God, musical artists, oh God, Father, we pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, raise them up, oh God, to be worshippers in the arts in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, dancers, choreographers in the name of Jesus Christ. Be glorified, O oh God, Father, through paintings, through scriptures, O oh God, through sculptures, O oh God, through songs in the name of Jesus Christ. Be glorified, O oh God, Father, your Elohim, O oh God, you are the creator of heavens and of the earth, O oh God. Create, O oh God, something new in Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. Do a new thing, O oh God, Father, in Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ, for the glory of your name in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we dethrone Satan, O oh God, Father, from Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. We dethrone, O oh God, every form of any form of negativity, O oh God, from Liberia in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, let your goodness, O oh God, Father, let your righteousness, O oh God, Father, be revealed, O oh God, in arts and entertainment in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we thank you, we praise you. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen. And last of all, beloved, thank you so much for praying. Last of all, we shall pray 
for the business sphere. We're going to pray that the Lord will raise up Christian business people in the name of Jesus Christ, Christian CEOs, Christian managers, Christian workers. The reason why we're praying this particular prayer point is because we want the Lord to raise up leaders, people who fear the Lord, like Daniel feared the Lord, like Joseph feared the Lord. They must be believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know that if they are believers, they will fear the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. And they will be ministers of the gospel in their spheres of influence, in their, in their, in their localities, in their jobs, in the economy, in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for a strengthening of every form of Christian business in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be revival in the workplace in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you, oh God. You, oh God, you started a new thing. Do a good thing, oh God. Father, we pray, oh God, that every single, yes, thank you, Father, that every single Christian business owner, oh God, Father, there shall be a light in the name of Jesus Christ. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Arise and shine, oh God, Christians, oh God, within Liberia, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you, we praise you. Your name shall be glorified forever, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, beloved. Thank you so much for praying. We shall have a very short interlude before we continue with the next minister of God. We're going to thank God for all he's been doing in the nation of Liberia. And let's just have a short interlude by Minister Olan and his team, the Davidic worshippers. And the Lord shall be glorified through praise and worship in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, beloved.
Father, we thank you this morning. We will always worship you for your goodness, for your faithfulness, for your loving kindness. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you that this 20th day of the fourth month in the year of the Lord, 2024, we are thankful to be counted among the living. Many slept, but they never woke up this morning for your mercy, your goodness, your love woke us up. We are grateful to you. We thank you across the nations of the earth, wherever your people are connected on this platform. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we are thankful for your loving kindness. We thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for voice to the nation. Thank you for the healing room. Thank you for what you are doing in our time, in our season. In our generation, Lord, we appreciate you, we exalt you, we enthrone you. What a faithful God you have. What an awesome God you have. What a glorious God you have. Thank you for how far you have helped us. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for not allowing the plan of the wicked to prosper in our lives. What a good God you have. Thank you for ordering our steps. You said the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Thank you for watching over your work to perform in our life. Father, we are thankful to you. Once again, we are here this morning to connect with you. Father, breathe on us in the name of Jesus. Lord, in this season of quantum leap, Father, we have come to place a demand on the grace for advancement in every area of our life that we will advance in our individual lives in our spiritual lives, in our physical lives, Lord, in our marital lives, Father, in our destiny, in our financial life, we will advance in the name of Jesus. We place a demand on, the, on this altar this morning, Lord, that grace for advancement will come upon each and every one of this platform in the mighty name of Jesus. We will never remain on the same spot. The God of all grace will move you forward he said the path of the just man is as a shiny light that shineth more and more. Our path will shine more and more in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, breathe upon our heart. Breathe upon your word. Let your word bless us and let your name be exalted. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this morning I'm trusting that God Almighty will advance us in the journey of life as we look into this perfect law of liberty, the word of God. This morning we're going to be praying for advancement. But before we go into prayers, let's just bring up some few scriptures as we just share some thoughts from the word of God. Exodus chapter 14, from verse 13 to 15. Exodus 14, 13, 15. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Amen. That same word is coming to somebody on this platform. Amen. The Lord said, I should speak to you that you should go forward. Amen. Enough of crying over still weak in that situation. It's time you move forward. Amen. It doesn't matter how strong your oppositions are, how strong an enemy pursuing your destiny. You are unstoppable Amen. in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. I decree again you are unstoppable. Amen. That sickness cannot stop you. That disease cannot stop you. That attack from the pit of hell cannot stop you. You are going forward. You will fulfill your days. You will fulfill your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, when we talk about advancement, what do we mean? Advancement means progress without obstruction. It, 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 irrespective of obstacle, irrespective of obstruction, you are making progress. Advancement means positive 
development, positive enlargement, greater height of success, manifesting the glory of God upon your life. People are seen and they know that, oh, by this daughter of Zion, this son of God is making progress, is going forward in every area of his life. Hallelujah. The psalmist in Psalm 43, verse 3 says, Send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto the holy hills and to thy tabernacle. When the light of God goes with you, you become unstoppable. The light of God leads you, it advances you in every area of your life. You can't walk with the light and be in darkness. He said, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. Beloved, it is not God's will for any of his children to be stagnant in life. Oh, no, God didn't design us to remain on the same spot in the journey of life. No wonder the psalmist said in Psalm 143, verse 10, Psalm 143, verse 10, Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me. In the land of uprightness, lead me, lead me, because I wasn't destined to be on the same spot. I wasn't designed to be stagnant. Lord, lead me. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He made me to lie down in green pastures. He leaded me beside the still water. A child of God is expected to make progress. I pray for you; you will make progress in the journey of life. You will make progress. This year, 2024, you will make progress. Your progress will never be hindered. Your progress will never be stopped. No power of hell will be able to stop your progress. In the mighty name of Jesus, sir, you will make progress. In your marital life, you will make progress. In your career life, you will make progress. In your health life, you will make progress. In your financial life, you will make progress. In the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, it is an aberration for any child of God to remain stagnant in any area of their life. Third John 2, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. His desire is that will advance. Another word for advancement is to prosper, is to go forward, is to succeed in all that you do in your health, in, in your labor, in everything that you talk. He desire that we make progress in all that we do. God wants us to move away from that stagnant position. Move from your Mount Oreb to your promised land. You have dwelled long enough on that Mount Oreb, weeping and crying, lamenting. Some have opened the book of lamentation for themselves. And they have refused to leave that spot. God spoke to his people in Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 6. He says, the Lord spoke unto us in Horeb. He saying, you have dwelt long enough in this mount. You have dwelt long enough in this problem, in that challenge, in that situation, complaining, looking for who to blame for that. Wake up, rise up. Rise up. How long will you sit over that trouble, that challenge? Wake up. Tell yourself, I'm waking up. I'm rising up. I refuse to remain on the same spot. Because God's desire is that you and I should advance, we go forward in life. Proverbs 4 verse 18. But the path of the just man is as a shining light that shineth more and more, more and more until the perfect day. God wants your path to shine more and more. God wants your life to shine more and more, your marriage to shine more and more. It's enough of quarreling, fighting in that home. It's enough of living that reckless life. You leave your wife, your family, you pursue after another woman. Enough of that kind of lifestyle. God wants your life to be straight. God wants you to face your family, face your husband, face your wife, face your children. Raise a godly family. Glory be to God in the highest. He's not happy when we are 
Often every time we are quarreling, fighting one battle or the other, no, that is not the will of God for you. And I pray for somebody, I pray for that home. Listening to me and listening carefully in the name that is above every name. Every hand of the enemy that has been stretched forth over your home, I command that hand to wither in the name of Jesus. May the hand of the Lord rest upon your family, rest upon your husband, rest upon your wife, rest upon your children, rest upon your siblings. Every agent of darkness that has crept into your home, the fire of God will roast them in the mighty name of Jesus. The light of God will shine in your home. Your family will make progress in the mighty name of God. You will not be stranded in that marriage. Help, we come for you in the name of Jesus. The Sabbath, I lift up my eyes unto the hills, but when cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord, who has made the heavens and the earth. I pray for that young woman. I pray for that man. Help from above will locate you in the name of Jesus. This 20th day of the fourth month in the year 2024, God will send help to you. He will send help to you. The help that will advance you. The help that will move you forward. The help that will cause you to laugh in the name of Jesus. Jesus died for us legally to build way for us to make progress. He didn't die for you and I to be stranded. He died for us to make progress, to advance in the journey of life. So beloved, what are the factors that contribute to our advancement in life, to our progress in life? What are the factors? Praise the Lord. Understand that promotion and advancement comes from God. Except the law, except the law, if God is not involved, you can't go forward. Promotion and advancement come from Him. So, one major factor that will cause you or contribute to advancement is your relationship with God. Very important. Don't forget Psalm 75, verse 6 and 7 tells us it says, For promotion, cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south but God is the judge he put it down one and set up another ah, I pray for somebody listening to me God will divinely set you up he will set you up for success he will set you up for progress in the mighty name of Jesus so promotion and advancement come from him so your relationship with him is important your relationship with him you know, it's what entitles you <laughs> for advancement, for possession, for favor. If you have a good relationship with the president, you will be favored. That's just the truth. If you have a good relationship with Jehovah, Henry, or the Almighty, the maker of the heaven and the earth, of course, you'll be favored. You will go forward, you will make progress. Hallelujah. So, in this level of relationship, you take the first step. You do what? You take the first step. Hallelujah. First step towards your greatness and advancement. Your relationship with him. No wonder we are admonished in the book of James chapter 4. And verse 8, he said, draw near to God. Draw near to he, God and he will draw near to you. Come to him. Seek him. Come close to him. Stop running away from the Lord. I don't know who God is speaking to on this line. Draw closer to him. You want to advance in life. You are a Christian. You have been on the same spot for all these years. What is your relationship like? You can't be in solid relationship with God and be stranded, beloved. <coughs> the Bible says, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Yeah. Let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You can't claim that you are in relationship with him. Meanwhile, you are frolicking with iniquity. You are entangled with iniquity. No, our God does not operate that way. He says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands. Ye sinner, purify your heart. Ye double-minded, clean up. If you are going to advance, relationship is required with the one who can cause a man to go forward in life. 
and that relationship is premised on purity, a life of purity. In, in this end time, a lot of pastors are even afraid to preach about purity or holiness. They say, we don't want people to run away from church. Oh, <laughs> you better run back to God. Where are you running to? Hallelujah. Where will you run to that the end of the Lord will not reach you? The truth must be preached. The, this relationship begins with you surrendering your life to Christ genuinely, accepting him as your Lord and personal Savior. Some people claim that they gave their life to Christ. Meanwhile, in the, in the course of things, they collected their life back. <laughs> and they begin to live the same way they used to live. Come to him. Job said something. I love Job. Job chapter 22, from verse 21. If you read it down to 30, Job said something about this relationship. You want to move forward. He said, acquaint now thyself with him. Acquaintance has to do with relationship. He said, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto you. So when you are in relationship with him, he says, good will come unto thee. You will enjoy peace. There are so many on this platform. You have been troubled by the forces of evil. You have been troubled by challenges. There's no peace in your home, no peace in your career, in your health. He said, acquaint now thyself with him. You will be at peace. So get into relationship with him. You want to enjoy peace maritally, career-wise, in your health, in your destiny, get into relationship with him. Say, and good shall come unto thee. You begin to experience the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. He said, receive, I pray thee, the Lord from his mouth, and lay up his word in his heart, in thy heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. When you return to him, you get back to that nation, he will build up every broken aspect of your life. It will build up your career, build up your marriage, build up your family, build up your destiny. Say, thou shalt be built up. Hallelujah. And, and thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacle. Iniquity. Anyone that wants to relate with God must make sure that he has nothing to do with sin. You can't, you can't, you can't carry sin and want to carry God. You know it's not possible. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. And it says, when you get into this relationship with God, your life is built up. You put iniquity away from that tabernacle. He said, then thou shalt lay up gold as dust. Prosperity will come. Abundant blessing will come. You will lay up gold as dust, the gold of the office, as the stone of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense. Come on. I love this. So God will defend you. It doesn't matter how much the enemy tries, God will defend you. I pray for somebody here. The defense of God will surround your life. He said, God will defend you. And thou shalt have plenty, plenty, plenty of silver. You will not be a beggar. You have plenty of silver. For then shall thou have thy delight in the Almighty, and thou shalt lift up thy face unto God. Thou shalt also make thy prayer. Can you see where prayers begin to come into the answer now? Then you can begin to pray thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vow. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. And light shall shine on thy path, upon thy ways. And when men are saying, there is a casting down, but you will say, there is a lifting up. Hallelujah. And he shall save the humble person, and he shall deliver the highland of the innocent, and it is delivered by the pureness of thy heart. Hallelujah. This is why relationship with God is so powerful. Relationship is, with God is so critical for our progress, for our advancement, for our quantum leap. You can't stay far away from me and you want quantum leap. No. It is not, if you want a child, if a child wants to be carried by the parent, what does the child do? He will come close, lift up his hands, say, well, Daddy, carry me. He can't sit on the bed far away there and say that he carry me. It doesn't work that way. Draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Is somebody hearing me? Don't let any challenge, don't let any situation in our society stop you. Your relationship with God is very critical. You know, the advent of COVID has messed up the relationship of so many people with God. You need to revisit your relationship with God. Lord, I need you more than ever. 
I don't want to be far away from you. I want to walk closely with you. I want to seek, seek your face all the days of my life. And very quickly, number two, hallelujah, number two factors that will contribute to our advancement, to our progress in life and cause us to live is that we need to cultivate a habit of prayer. We can never stop talking about a lifestyle of prayer. Men ought always, always, always to pray and not to faint. It's not the pastor that wrote that scripture. It's the almighty God himself, the one that created us to relate with us, to communicate with us. Men ought always, we must develop, cultivate the habit of prayer because prayer is the master key to opening the doors of opportunity for advancement in life. Beloved, you can advance on the altar of prayer yes. as you engage the God of advancement. After you have done the needful, you have taken, you know, the right step in your pursuit. You have crossed the 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 T the and dots, the highs and all the stuff. Oh, you still need to pray. You still need to pray. Is somebody with me? Daniel used the key of prayer to guarantee advancement in his life. Even in the face of apparent condemnation and persecution, Daniel still prayed. Can you imagine? They came and said, nobody should pray for 30 days. For 30 days. The devil knows that 30 days is enough if he gets you out of a, 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 the platform of prayer. 30 days is enough to mess up your destiny. And somebody is listening to me. <laughs> you hardly even pray. On your own. There's no time you have. Except you have one problem that is messing you up. That's when you begin to look for God. But the devil knows how to trap a lot of Christians. Nobody should pray. And there was a decree. That if anyone would pray within those days. You will be thrown into the lion's den. That's not a joke. That, that wasn't a joke at all. If it was in this age, hey, people won't come to church again. But look at what Daniel did. The Bible says he opened his window. Yes. Car. I love that. He opened his window. Let them see me pray. If I'm going to die while praying, let me die. I'm not talking to a monument. I'm talking to Jehovah, the Almighty, the Ageless One, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, the One who speaks and it is done. Daniel, the Bible tells us in Daniel chapter six, verse ten. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his window being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he knelt upon his knee three times a day and prayed. And gave thanks before his God as he did at four times. Take note, three times a day, not just once. Three times a day. Three times a day. Three times a day. Hey, that speaks volume. We shouldn't be tired of praying. Three times a day prayed. And the people that tried to set him up saw him pray. And they went to report him. You know the story of Daniel. He was taken to the lion's den as he has violated the king's decree. Even the king didn't feel that. Ah, Daniel, oh Daniel, how can I? He wanted to, they, they even want the king. You know, you can't change the decree that you have made. Can you imagine that? Because they want to get at Daniel. I pray for somebody, whoever wants to get at you, God will frustrate them. God will show up for you in the mighty name of Jesus. And the king told Daniel, the God you call upon will show up. It will come to your rescue. And interestingly, God showed up in the lion's den because he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Glory be to God. He, he, he showed up in the lion's den and went to speak to the lion. Said that today I want you to go on fasting because my servant is coming here. I pray for you in the name that is above every name. Wherever lion, whichever lion's den you have found yourself, the lion of the tribe of Judah will show up for you. In the mighty name of the he will show up for you. Amen. God shut the mouth of the lions. When Daniel was thrown into the lions' den, the lions couldn't hit him. They were just playing with him. And Daniel probably was even worshiping God there. The king himself couldn't sleep. 
And then in the morning he came back to hear the voice of Daniel, whether it has been eaten by lions or is still alive. And, and Daniel told the king, my Lord, God has sent his angel to shut the mouth of the lion. Glory be to God. Oh, I pray for one precious daughter of Zion on this platform. And that man that is looking up to God, God will send help us to you. He will shut the mouth of the lions of life. In the name of Jesus. <coughs> Hallelujah. And Daniel was brought out. The following day, all the accusers of Daniel. It's okay. Since you don't like to pray, you need to see lion also. Because those who don't pray will be eaten up by the lions of life. <laughs> and interestingly, not just the people that accuse Daniel, some of them, maybe their wives didn't even know anything about the situation. Their children never knew anything about it. But they packed their wives and their children to join them. Ah! Holy Spirit, I pray for somebody on this altar. Your, your, your children will not be victim of your sin or your shortcoming. In the mighty name of Jesus. That are so many Christians today have been suffering from, you know, the thing they knew nothing about. Their children, their wives, their, their family members, every one of them were matched to the lions there and they were eaten up. Beloved, don't joke with your prayer life. A child of God who wants to succeed in life must not joke with his prayer life because there are challenges at every junction of your success and advancement in life. We can't be free from challenges until we leave this earth. Every challenge we meet will give us room to rise. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. In Exodus 2.23, he says, and it shall come to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt, and it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of bondage. And they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. And God had their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham. They cried to God in prayer before God will remember. He will remember you as we begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. Beloved, I want you to know progress, advancement in life is God's divine will for you and I. He wants us to make progress. He wants us to succeed in everything we do. And in this year of quantum leap, you will advance. You will make progress. So we are going to pray this morning, wherever you are. We are going to pray because I want to trust God that every one of us that are connected to him this morning, you are a genuine child of God. And in case you have been struggling with your salvation, it's a good opportunity for you to say, Jesus, I need you in my life. Save my soul from sin. Deliver me from the bondage of sin. I want to advance in life. I want to make progress, but I can't make progress with sin. Listen, my friend, my brothers, my sister. Sin is like carrying a, a bag of cement on your head and you want to run. How fast can you run? Sin is a weight. It will slow you down. It will not allow you to advance. Glory be to God. So let's begin to lift up our voices and appreciate the Almighty. Praise the God of advancement, the God of progress. The one who can cause you to make progress in your journey, in your destiny. Give him all the honor. Magnify him. What a faithful God. What an awesome God. Father, we thank you. If I were you, I would let God hear my voice this morning. Lord, I'm grateful to you. I'm thankful to you. Without you, I can do nothing. Without you, I can't go far. You are the God of progress. I bless your name. Lord, I magnify you. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I enthrone you. What a faithful God. What a glorious God. <coughs> what a mighty God we serve. <coughs> we exalt your name we praise your name we adore your name you are the excellent God you are the gracious God thank you my father blessed be your holy name thank you heavenly father 
In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. Beloved, for God to make, for us to make progress in life and destiny, God must advance our life. God must advance our life as it was in the case of Moses and several other people in the scripture. The Bible tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 6, 1 Samuel 12 verse 6, and Samuel said unto the people, it is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. He said, it is the Lord that advanced I pray God will advance you. God will advance my life. Everyone on this platform, God will advance your life in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and say, Father, advance my life, advance my destiny in the journey of life in the name of Jesus. Advance my family, advance my loved ones in the name of Jesus. You are the one who advanced Moses, you advance Aaron, advance me, O Lord. Advance me, O Lord. Advance my destiny. Advance me in my health life. Advance me maritally. Advance me ministerially. Advance me in my health. Advance me in my pursuit. Advance my family. Advance my wife. Advance my children. Advance my husband. Advance me in every area of life. It is God who advanced Moses. You advanced Moses and Aaron. Advance each and every one on this platform. Oh Lord, across the nations of the earth. Oh Lord God Almighty. Well, advance your people in the healing room. Advance everyone that needs to be advanced in their health. In the name of Jesus, advance my life, O oh Lord. I refuse to remain on the same spot. Advance me, O Lord. Male brado shaba, ekete brado shaba, ele brado shaba, entele begeza brado shaba. I brado shaba la bayada. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. This advancement is very important. Today, why is it that people are running to advanced country? <laughs> because they want a better life. God will advance your life. When God advances you, you won't need to be running up and down. God will advance your family. Some of you are where you are today because you're looking for advancement. That's why you cannot even go back to your roots. You desire advancement. There is nothing wrong with that. I pray. The same way you pursue physical advancement, God will advance you spiritually. May you begin to pursue spiritual advancement so that you will not remain on the same spot. The problem we are having in this generation is that now that you have gotten physical advancement, now your advancement spiritually is depleted. Depreciate. You are going to cry out to God. Hebrews 12 verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Say, Father, take away from my life every weight, every sin that won't let me advance in the journey of my Christian life. Lord, take away every sin in my life, take away every weight. Every attitude, every character, every reproach that won't let me advance in the name of Jesus. Somebody pray that prayer. Oh Lord, pray for yourself. Pray for your marriage. In that marriage, why you are not advancing is because of certain ways, certain attitudes, certain traits in your life. Cry out to God. Cry out to God, Lord. Every weight, every sin in my life, in my destiny that doesn't want me to advance in the journey of life, let them be lifted in the name of Jesus. The weight of sin, the weight of sickness, the weight of disease, the weight of infirmity, the weight of affliction that won't let me advance in the journey of life. Take it away. Every weight that won't let me leap Oh Lord, I won't let me enjoy quantum leap. Oh Lord, take away those weights in my life, in the name of Jesus, in my family, in my marriage, in my ministry, in my assignment. Oh Lord, every weight that won't let me have my quantum leap ministerially, in my health, in my career, take away those weights, take away those sin in the name of Jesus. Joshua, thou shalt become a plain, 
and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, crying, grace, grace unto it. Grace is coming upon somebody. There is a grace that caused a man to advance. I call it grace for advancing. There is a grace that advances you in the journey of life. Grace is that divine enabling power of God that comes upon a man and causes you to do what you couldn't do by your natural ability. You begin to do things supernatural. People begin to envy you, not knowing that the grace of God is upon your life. You are going to cry out to the Lord. Say, Father, every obstacle, every barrier limiting my advancement in the journey of life, in my destiny, let them be uprooted. Every mountain, who has that whole mountain that want to limit my advancement, the grace of God is upon my life. I am unstoppable. Lebrado Shapa, mountain of sickness, mountain of affliction, generational mountain that is standing that says, no, you will not go forward. You are a liar. I decree you mountain, you are a liar. You can't stop me. You can't stop my generation. You can't stop my wife. You can't stop my children. You can't stop me. Oh, I speak to you, mountain. Here in the word of the Lord, I am unstoppable. I cry against every mountain of limitation. I want to stop my advancement in the name of Jesus. I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. You obstacle, you can't stop me. I am going far, going forward. I will break forth on the left and on the right. I will possess the gate of my enemy. Ah, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we pray. God spoke to Moses in the book of Exodus chapter 7 verse 1. As they were on their journey to the promised land, advancing to where God told them that they would reach. And the enemy started throwing all kinds of obstacles their way. But God told Moses, this is very informing here, Exodus 7 verse 1, he says, oh my God, and the Lord said to Moses, see, come on, tell me about see. May God open your eyes to see. He says, see, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. See, I have made thee a God to fail. It doesn't matter how many Pharaohs surround you. Pharaoh is symbolic of obstacle, obstruction, limitation to your advancement. But you need to see that you are on top of fail, that you are over that fail. I pray for somebody here, God will anoint your eyes. You'll be able to see victory over every challenge in the name of Jesus. Therefore, lift up your voice and say, Father, no, I can't hear say, Father, by the power of your advancement, Lord, make me God over every challenge, over every situation of life. Open my eyes to see what you have made of my life. You have made me God over fear of life, over every problem of life, over every limitation of life. You have made me God. Open my eyes, oh Lord. I refuse to walk as a blind Christian. Oh Lord, I can see the, the fullness of your grace and your purpose in my life. You have made me God over the challenges of life. In the name of Jesus, everyone on this platform Lord God open our eyes to see the victory that you have wrought for us in the name of Jesus open our eyes to see your blessing to see the good part of our marriage our husband, our wives our children, open our eyes in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Glory to God. When God decides to advance you, He will open up depths of grace, talents, giftings that cannot be found elsewhere. He will open it up in you. It will make sure that 
you become the answer to the challenges and the problem around. Because whenever you are answered to certain problem, you will advance in life. It doesn't matter how your face look. It doesn't matter how tall you are or short. You know, once you have answered to so people are looking for those who have answered. They are not looking for grammar. Even if your grammar looks somehow, as long as you have answered, you have solution. You will be needed. Glory to God. Joseph was needed because he had the answer. The Bible tells us in Genesis 41 verse 38. Genesis 41 verse 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servant, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? Hallelujah. A man in whom the Spirit of God is. God will advance you. Oh, God will make you a solution. In that company, in that office that you are working, I pray for you from this altar, in the name that is above every God will make you a solution. A solution provider. An answer giver. Lift up your voice. Say, Father, advance my life and bring me to my due level. Make me a solution. Oh Lord, to the problem around in the name of Jesus so that my life can be advanced. Make me an answer. Oh Lord, make me a solution provider in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I don't want to be a proverb in my world. I want to be a solution provider in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I don't want men to tolerate me. Oh Lord God Almighty, ah, wherever I find myself, Lord, I have been needed in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, in that company, Lord, in that business, make me a solution in the name of Jesus so that my destiny will be advanced. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 5. Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 5. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They were driving a court car <laughs> in one place. And the Bible says suddenly, there was, there came from heaven a sound, a, a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now they were dwelling in Jerusalem, used the both men from every nation under heaven, and at, at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. We are going to cry out to God, let the wind of heaven blow. Let the wind go and carry me, advance me to my next level. It was the wind of the Spirit that blew in the day of Pentecost, and it, it advanced the destiny of the apostles. When the wind of the Spirit blew, this year the wind is already blowing. It has not stopped blowing. Oh, people thought it has stopped blowing after the 50 days fasting. No, it doesn't stop blowing. It's still blowing. It will blow and advance your destiny. It will take you to where God has ordained you to it. It will blow away sickness from your life, infirmity from your destiny. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice, say, Father, let the wind blow and advance my life to the next level. Advance my destiny. Let the wind of the Spirit blow upon my life, upon my business, upon my career, upon my family, upon my health. Let the wind blow in the name of Jesus. Let the wind blow. In the name of Jesus, the wind of the Spirit blow upon my health, blow upon my marriage, blow upon my ministry, blow upon my family. Let the wind blow in the name of Jesus on this altar voice to the nation in the healing room. Let the wind blow, healing wind blow upon your people to as many that need the torture, blow upon them, blow upon our homes, blow upon our marriages. Blow upon our career, advance us. Let the wind of God blow in the Prado Shapa and recommend the Lebede Susania and Prado Baya on this platform. Let the wind of God blow. Oh, my Lord, Rabado Shapa, the wind of your power, the wind of your grace, the wind of your healing, the wind of transformation. Let the wind blow in the name of Jesus. In Kamade, Brazil, Sedia Mada, and Prado Shapa, and 
Try to stop him, but they couldn't. I was talking with a friend of mine yesterday from the United States, and he was telling me the challenges he was facing. I said, Don't you know that challenges are everywhere? <laughs> challenges, the, the challenges, the, a challenge is a universal citizen, he doesn't need visa to travel. You find challenges everywhere. And I told him that the God of who have called you, who have brought you thus far. We continue to give you victory over those challenges. That wherever you are, you become a force to be reckoned with. Because some were threatened by his presence. Ha, ah, come on. I tell you, as the Lord lives, this year, God will advance your destiny. After the order of Daniel, you will become a force to be reckoned with in your office, in your family, in your home. You will never be relegated. Nobody will push you aside. No one will look down on you any longer. In the name of Jesus, the grace of God will speak upon your life. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning, but the Lord is speaking through my mouth to somebody here that from a spot you become a force to be reckoned with. Your destiny will attract blessing. In the name of Jesus, no one will relegate you. They will never push you aside. Lift up your voice, say, Father, advance my life after the order of Daniel. Make me a force to be reckoned with. In the name of Jesus, make me a force to be reckoned with. In the name of Jesus, make me a force to be reckoned with. 
from henceforth I will no longer be a Bible and a prover. No way. I become a force to be reckoned with. Advance my life in the name of Jesus. In my city, in my nation, in my company, in my office space. Oh Lord, in my school. Rabado Shaba, make me force to be reckoned with. In Abraham, nobody will ever look down on me again. Nobody will talk me down. I refuse to be a Bible and a prover. Oh Lord, because I am a carrier of your grace, my pastor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The God of our brother, thank you for this year of quantum leap. I'm leaping forward, I'm advancing, I'm breaking limits, I'm breaking barriers. I am unstoppable. No power of hell can stop the counsel of God in my life. My God, thank you, Father. Lord, we want to say thank you. Man predos caprandele brazuzalia akuzuzidi kabazuza elebendo zabra ilakata bradoshada. From this house of liberty, Lord, we come before you and we lift up our voice. Lord God Almighty, that from henceforth, everyone connecting right now on this platform and those who will yet connect, we pray, Father, may their destiny be advanced. In the name of Jesus, I decree that you are unstoppable. No power of hell will stop you. No force from your background will limit you. You will rise above your limitation. In the mighty name of God, God will open your eyes. You will see far. You will see clear. In the mighty name of Jesus, the city you are living in will not stop you. Your nation will not be able to stop you. That sickness or disease will not stop you. You will break through. You will break limits. You will advance. In the name of Jesus, the lion of life that has been assigned to devour you, God will shut their mouth. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for somebody. The power of God, the wind of the spirit will blow upon you, will advance you in the mighty name of Jesus. I hear the spirit of God say, weep no more. You are going forward. You are going forward. Weep no more. Weep no more. You are going forward. You are going forward. You are unstoppable. That will be your testimony. You will share your testimony shortly in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree the blessing of the Father upon you. May the God of heaven bless you. May he bless you beyond limit. May his blessing be surprising to you in the name of Jesus. In life, you will not be stranded. You will not be confused. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will go forward. You will go far. You will sing songs of joy. You shall be healthy. The Lord will strengthen your bones. In the mighty name of Jesus, the enemies, when they see you, they will run from you. In the mighty name of Jesus, the glory of God will shine upon you. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. I look forward to hearing your testimony. And the God of all grace will bless you beyond measure. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. And I use this opportunity to invite you for service tomorrow at the Liberty Christian Connection. It's going to be a great time in God's presence. And your life will never, never remain the same again. Be blessed in the precious name of Jesus. Let's share the grace in fellowship. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. God bless you. Go and advance in Jesus' name.